Hello, my name is Nicole, and thank you so much today for just stopping by. I need to tell you that there have been many leaders, many great leaders that have walked this planet, and we need to take a moment just to acknowledge them every now and again because God used many people to help the people, okay? As much as we want to just focus in on the Bible sometimes and what Moses did and what Abraham did and what leaders of the Bible did to help the people, we've got many people that are on this planet to date that God is using to help the people. Now we can look back and we can learn some things from those great leaders of yesteryear, but what we can't do is bring them back from the dead. Some people will attempt to channel spirits in an effort to be able to be the best and the greatest and the most wonderful and all of that. But can I tell you that those are nothing more than deceptive spirits for those of you all who like to look into mirrors and look into all sorts of objects and take people's belongings, the deceased belongings to be more specific and chant over them. The deceptive spirit arises and when the deceptive spirit arises, he or she or it is going to expect you to do whatever it is that its commander wants to be done. So the ancient gods, so to speak, of yesteryear are still being controlled by the commander in chief whose name is none other than Lucifer, also known as Satan, Beelzebub, the devil, and many other names. This dark spirit will use its minion to possess individuals to do ugly, dreadful things, all in the name of goodness. That means that I will break you down mentally, physically, and spiritually to get you to where I want you to be. That is what the devil does. That is his instructions to his minions. He will tell them that it is time to move on this particular deal, on this particular person, or what have you. Except we're not going in to help the individual. We're going in to tear them down, but we're going to make it look like we're helping the individual. We're going to make it look like we're friends with this individual. And you see, it's not just a business move that the devil does, but he gets inside your psyche and he attacks you from within. And eventually he uses you, if you still got energy left, to hurt others. It's a process, just like it's a process to come to the Lord and walk the way he wants you to and to fulfill his will. Well, it is a process to get a man or a woman to be evil and do dirty things. Some of these entertainers don't just come out into the limelight without any clothes on initially, initially. But eventually the enemy convinces them that the only way to get people to really respond to you is that you've got to start shedding away shedding away certain fabrics and putting on certain attire and different accessories to be able to draw men and draw women and children toward you which will ultimately cause them to worship you because see the enemy's plan overall is to be worshiped but he knows that he has to use his minions to do just that. He has to use them to recruit others to worship him. And so it is a process. Some of you all need to say it is a process. It is a process. It is a process. The reason why you all have to repeat it is because it has been a process to get you to walk away from the Lord. Mm -hmm. That's what God has been telling me in the spirit. It has been a process. To get you to say, you know what, I'm not interested in God. I'm not interested in what he is doing. I'm not interested in Jesus. I'm not interested in none of that. 
And how did the enemy do it? Well, he used people, places, and things to distract you, to get you off track. To cause you to look at your job as being more important than spending some time with the Lord. He has gotten some of you all to look at other women as being more important than the person that's at home praying for you. He has caused some of you all to look at all the other books that are out there, all the other music that's out there, as long as it doesn't have Jesus in it. And so I say all that to lead you into a word that God has given me concerning his will for your life. His will for your life. Jesus is. Jesus is. He is the will for your life. To be even more specific, God has used Jesus to walk as a man. As an example for us to do what he has called us to do. Some of you all say, well, I don't know exactly what God has called me to do. Well, then you need to spend some time in prayer and fasting and reading the word of the Lord. So that you do know what it is that God's will is for your life. And then through all of that, he will be able to direct you in this very messy and dirty world. I will use another example. Because we are quite familiar with Jesus and his missions. But you also have those leaders, like I said, from yesteryear, like the Martin Luther Kings. Who started off reading God's word, praying, and doing a number of other things to find out what God's will was for their lives. And some of these leaders didn't, didn't title God as being God, but they knew there was a creator and they knew that there was a divine role that they had to fulfill. So if we can't agree on all the particulars of some of these leaders and these other religions, what we can agree with is that something was moving them to do great things to help humanity. Remember, the enemy kills, steals, and destroys. He doesn't want to help humanity. So whatever you choose to say about certain leaders, understand that God moves on men and women, whether they label him as God in the American language or not. He is still in the business of moving men and women to do what his will is that is if they're willing because he's not going to force himself men will force themselves on each other women will force themselves on each other children and so forth but God he'll give you that option you can say yes or you can say no if you say no like I did back in 1996 then you're putting yourself in a position where you don't have the protection that you really need to get through various trials. I will tell you that because he sees things that are happening in the future. He sees things that are going on. And if you don't take his protection, take his help, allow him to be the eyes for you then you will get swallowed up by the devil's vices. Jesus is the only way, saint. There is no other way but through Jesus. If you've tried everything else, then you should know. You should know that Jesus is the only one that's going to save us in the supernatural realm. This man-made stuff that's around here, like technological devices and all sorts of plans 
that he comes up with in laws. That's not going to help us in the supernatural realm. Some people aren't even concerned about the supernatural realm because for one, they don't even want to think about it. It's just too deep. It's too complex for some people and it's even too scary because they're afraid they might see something or experience something that's going to cause them to lose their mind. So they just leave it alone. Some people, they look at what happened to other folks and that's just enough for them to say, nope, I'm sorry, I'm not interested in nothing supernatural, good, evil, or otherwise. But this is not the time to take on that attitude. Not at all when you know that you are responsible for a family, when you know you are responsible for employees, when you know that you have great great things going on in your life this is not the time to start throwing up your hands saying I don't want to hear this and I don't have time for this and God is this and God is that this isn't the time for debate because see when the war is coming what you going to do stand there and start talking to people about oh well you know that's why I don't believe in God and this and that when the punch is coming towards your face, you better be ready to stand up and fight. That's what you better do. And we're talking about from a supernatural perspective. Because if you look at the civil rights movement and many other movements of the, of the day, it wasn't always about putting your hands up and fighting it out or going in your old stash and pulling out a gun and shooting somebody. Those individuals that were in those different movements back in the day, they were tapping into the supernatural realm. Many of them. They knew who they were in Christ. And you can hear old messages that Martin Luther King said, where he said he went up to individuals. Matter of fact, he had encouraged individuals to go up to others and tell them to let the children of God go. See, these individuals knew who they were in Christ, and that is why his move, the, the movement that he was a part of, that is why it is so significant, and that is why you haven't seen anything like it really since. Because when you get enough supernatural forces at work on the prayers of men and women, the oppressor can't help but let the people go. And some of you all are in relationships where you want to be let go. And God is going to grant that. He's going to grant that for some of you all. But others, you're going to have to stay in the wilderness experience because you don't listen. You didn't listen back in the day. You're still not listening now to the Lord. And you're not listening in the future. So while everybody else is happy and, and at peace in their situations, you're going to continue to struggle. You're going to continue to have your wilderness experience because you don't learn. You don't learn. And you see, if those individuals back in the day... If all of them took on that type of attitude, I'm not interested in any type of movement and I got things to do and I'm not concerned about no God and, and church and all that. If everybody took on that attitude, black folks would have still been in the back of the bus. And you see, we talk about the blacks back then and how they were going through, but whites were going through too. The poor whites, to be more specific. And some didn't quite understand what it was all about until someone or groups came to talk to them and say, you're just as bad as the black man. You're just as bad as the black woman. Your situation, your situation, they're oppressing you too. And this is why even now you hear people talking about elitism, social classes and all of that. Because it's still going on, people. People are still suppressing people. People are still robbing people. People are still lying to people. People are still playing all these little games with the poor to get them on board with their little agendas. There was a movie not that long ago that I was watching. And it was interesting because this white man, mind you, who was playing a Mexican character had made a statement about the poor people and the rich people's agenda. And he said <laughs> that those that read the books, they come up with the agendas, right? I'm just summarizing what he said. 
But the poor people, they don't read. And so what those who read do is they go and get the poor involved with their revolutions. And the poor go along with it because guess what? They don't read. And we still got plenty, plenty of people who don't read. And I honestly believe that's why there's so much emphasis placed on, on books at such a young age. I mean, there's so many other ways you can teach people besides putting a book in front of them. But I think that's why some people, once they get older, they decide they don't want to read anymore because they've been suffocated with so many books. And that actually works to the elite's advantage because if you are just overwhelmed with reading, by the time it really matters in your life, you're not going to do it. You're going to instead run to the television, which gives you an edited version of everything. The television doesn't give you the full, the full story about anything because, well, you know, for sake of time, let's hurry, hurry. Look at the morning programs. Rush, 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 rush. You want to, you know, listen to the rest of the program. You want to find out some more details. Oh, no, we only have two. We only have 20 seconds. OK. All right. Well, thank you so much for coming by our show. And now on to our next program. Come on now. You don't get the whole story. For some people, their motto in life is ignorance is bliss. They want to stay ignorant. They don't want to know anything about anything. Just leave me alone and let me deal with the issues that I got going on on the home front. But then when you get the knock at the door and somebody's telling you that there are some things going on in your community that is going to impact your household, now you're interested. But then even then some individuals, they're not. They're still going to say, hmm, well, you know what? Let the mother folks deal with it. That's what they were doing back then in those different movements. Let the mother folks handle it. I ain't got I ain't got it to do. I got other stuff to be concerned about. But I'm telling you that we are in we are in a place of our lives where sooner or later it's going to be time to organize. It's going to be time to organize and it's going to be time to withdraw your monies out of various programs. Stop buying certain things because people at the top, mind you, are getting so comfortable with their lifestyles, with their companies that they're sleeping on the job. They're not giving out quality anymore. They're going back into that racist type of attitude, that sexist attitude. They're not being polite or respectful. Their customer service people are lacking in knowledge. It's, it's going to be time. It's going to be time to organize. It's going to be time to, to stop buying certain things. And some of you all, God is going to knock on your door and ask you to sign this paper to help out or to get out here and walk with us. Or to get on the internet and visit a particular website. Or to make certain videos. And are you going to answer the call? Or are you going to be coming up with more excuses as to why you can't do this and can't do that? Older people need to become more knowledgeable on technology because a lot of the organizing is happening on the internet. A lot of the protests is happening on the internet. While more and more businesses are thinking about closing up the brick and mortar, 
sites or even downsizing their companies, what they're not anticipating is people protesting them one day, bankrupting them one day, because some people just refuse to lower their prices. Some people refuse to make better quality items. Some people refuse to put the right people in leadership. Some people don't want to listen to what their employees are telling them because they're more concerned about saving the rich money. And some people are just simply simple, stupid, if you will, fools. They're more concerned about being entertained all the time instead of paying attention to what is happening around them. Healthcare, business, religion, government, law, you name it. There's all sorts of things happening that are actually causing all sorts of drama with people behind the scenes. And a lot of these stories are not coming out in the forefront of our media simply because there are some people that want to protect their companies, their little social groups. God is knocking on the doors, saints, and he wants to raise up some new leaders, leaders that are willing to organize, leaders that are willing to say, I am not going to support this group and that group any longer. And sometimes it's not going to be on a national scale or even locally. Sometimes you're going to have to organize within your own family to come against other individuals who want to further oppress people in your own family by taking their money and using it for what they want by going into their households and using their stuff and then not replacing it. You're going to have to get together with certain individuals to protect other individuals even within your own family. God is going to talk to you about these things. For some of you all, he already has. And he's been telling you, look, this one is being taken advantage of in, in your family. This one needs to be ousted. He shouldn't even be a part of the group any longer because he just doesn't get it. No matter what people tell him, he wants to continue to be a drunkard. He wants to continue to gamble. He wants to continue to take advantage of people and lie and be manipulative. And if God is turning his back on certain individuals, then nine times out of ten, he's going to speak to you about telling other individuals to turn their back on certain people. Oh, no, but that wouldn't be right. Oh, yes, it would be right. Oh, yes, it would be right because sometimes that's what it takes is tough love. The problem is we got too many enablers in this world. We got too many people who like to spoil others. Others that are sick. Others that are ignorant. Others that are immature. Others that cannot handle all of what they're giving them. They can't handle the money. They can't handle the little gadgets, the little toys. They can't handle personal responsibility like organizing their household or cleaning up their bodies. And then you want to keep giving them and giving them and giving them some more. There comes a point where you have to withdraw. You have to say, I can't do this anymore for you. For some of you all, you got it on that level when it comes to family, but you don't understand it on a societal level. You don't understand what that means in business. You don't understand the power that you have and the, and the leadership skills that you have. 
where you can be able to get together with other individuals and say enough is enough. I don't like this particular support group. It is not helping us. It's actually hurting us. Let's all get together and complain to somebody about this particular person who's leading this group. And let's get him or her out of here. Some of you all don't know how important it is for you to go up to the schools and say to certain teachers, principals, what have you. Listen, you're not helping this school out by your nasty attitude. You're not benefiting the children. Some of you all are just too old. You're tired. Your patience is gone. Some are forgetful. They should have long left their positions. And so now God moves on men and women to organize, to go up to certain people and say, I'm sorry, but you're fired. God was dealing with these individuals behind closed doors, using people around them to tell them, look, you can't run this business anymore. You can't run this classroom anymore. You can't run this program anymore. You're messing up. And they didn't want to acknowledge that. So they continue to operate on fumes. They don't even have the spiritual reserves anymore. To handle the opposition. The opposition comes and they're already in tears. The opposition comes and they're already cussing. The opposition comes and they're ready to fight everybody. And we are not talking about just anybody, people. We're talking about believers. Let me be even more specific about who I'm talking about. Believers. These are people who God has been talking to about taking on roles. While he's been talking to other people about stepping down from roles. And they don't want to listen. This message is a two part message. The first we're talking about God raising up the leaders. The second part we're talking about God tearing down the leaders. And this is what is happening. If you look closely at a lot of these businesses that have been around for many, many years. Behind the scenes, there are business people who just don't know how to change or just don't want to change or don't want to get the necessary education to come up higher. And so, the people start rising up and saying, we can't take this anymore. This person is just plain old ignorant. This person is just stubborn. This person is useless. What are we going to do? And somebody says, well, we need to start writing some letters. Or we need to sit down and have a meeting with this person. Or we need to go over their head. And then that person who speaks out doesn't get very far because in some cases... Lord Jesus, in some cases, these people end up dying, get be, being murdered because they're exposing some foolishness that's going on. And then everybody sees, uh oh, so-and-so died or so-and-so got a mysterious illness or what have you. So guess what they do? They don't continue on with their meetings. They don't continue you know, talking about bringing down this one or that one. Nope. Mm -mm. They flee. They run like roaches. Uh oh, the light got turned on. I got to get out because they might kill me and kill my family. Fear takes over. People need to unify. People need to get to a place where they say enough is enough and be like Martin Luther King towards the end of his life. He got to a place where he got tired of reading from scripts. Oh, yeah, that's the part that I didn't talk about. If you do some in-depth research about him, you'll see that he had his flaws as a leader. We all do. We all do. If you're a mother, you got flaws. 
If you're an author, you have flaws. If you are a, a writer, a lawyer, a doctor, a teacher, a preacher, you have flaws. We all do. When you're responsible for other individuals and you're trying to help them, sooner or later, somebody in the group is going to be jealous. They're going to be angry, upset. They're going to come up with a plan to get close to you, see what your weaknesses are, and then tap into those weaknesses. Martin Luther King was no exception. But I don't say that to discourage people from standing up and talking about issues and going out and doing things. But I say that because, you know, we have an enemy and you know that enemy doesn't like us when we speak truth. Every time I put a message up here on YouTube or anywhere else, the enemy starts attacking me on the home front. And then if he can't get me on the home front, he gets me over the telephone. And if he can't get me that way, then he tries in other ways. Sometimes we become our own worst enemy. Little, little uh, signs and symbols and everything else start floating around. Trying to psychologically get us to a place where we're so mentally broken that we eventually just say, you know what, Lord, just take me now. But the devil's a liar. God will take us when he gets ready. So I hope that some of you all will just take hold of this message and do something with it. I've said that in other audio. Just do something with it. Look at your situation that you're going through right now. Look at the family, look at the business, look at the education, look at the spirituality, look at the government, look at all of these things that's going on that directly as well as indirectly affect you and see what you can do to make a difference. To God be the glory.